Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quintic equation. And this is not going to be my first quintic. We've done quintics before. And by the way, this is a video response to black pen, red pen. I'm pretty sure you know him. I'm also going to share the link here for his video. So you can take a look. All right, we have this quintic equation. It's missing a lot of terms. That's why it's a little easier to factor. So we're gonna look at the solution. And then we're going to be looking at the graph. All right. So let's see how we can handle this. So I'm going to manipulate this x to the fifth term a little bit. So I'm going to write this as x to the fifth minus x squared plus x squared plus x to the fourth plus one equals zero. Now, why am I doing this? You might be questioning where on earth uh, does this minus x squared come from? First of all, it works, right? If you subtract a, a term and add the same one, totally fine. But why is it x squared? Okay, couple reasons. First of all, it makes this expression factorable by grouping. And these two groups have a common factor. Why? Let's see why. So we'll take out x squared here. It's gonna be x cubed minus one. And then this term here, I'm going to leave that alone for now. And then I'll factor it separately and just copy and paste it here. Okay. So let's take care of this. First of all, x cubed minus 1 is the difference of two cubes. So I can factor it as x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. And now let's go ahead and focus on this. And then we'll go ahead and paste it over there. So how do you factor x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1? Okay. So this can be completed to a square. So in other words, if I add x squared to this, it becomes x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1, which is a perfect square. But I also need to subtract x squared to balance the equation. Make sense? 2x squared minus x squared is equal to x squared, so we're all good. But I did this because this is a perfect square, and that is perfect. So I can write it as x squared plus 1 squared minus x squared. You don't have to put the x in parentheses, but I just wanted to emphasize the difference of two squares formula here. So you can see the pattern. And the pattern says what? a squared minus b squared is a plus b times a minus b. This is one of the most important identities in math. I think you should all know this. So now we can factor it as x squared plus 1 plus x, but I can write it as x squared plus x plus 1 because we should always write polynomials in standard form, right? And then the other factor is going to be x squared plus 1 minus x, but I can write it as x squared minus x plus 1. Great. So we're going to go ahead and take this expression and paste it over here. So we need to add this one. Let's go ahead and do it now. Uh, so I'm not going to need the equal sign. So let me go ahead and cut it like this and bring it over here. Is it going to fit? Hopefully. Okay. I think it's going to work, right? Well, the parentheses are kind of out of bounds, but hopefully it'll work. Okay, I can do the following. Uh, let me do this, and then I'm going to move the whole thing. So hopefully it'll be better. Okay, here we go. So now we've taken care of this, and I can get rid of this part. I don't need it anymore. Okay. Now, what are we going to do with this? We have a common factor, like I said earlier. This is now factorable because x squared plus x plus 1 is a common factor. I can take it out. And then the other factors are going to be x squared times x minus 1. I can definitely distribute, right, and write it as x cubed minus x squared. And then plus, plus, this is the plus sign right here, and now we're here. x squared minus x plus 1. That's kind of like a long you know, factor, but don't worry, it's going to simplify because x squared cancels out and we end up with x squared plus x plus 1 multiplied by x cubed minus x plus 1 equals 0 and our equation is factored. So, so this is just another approach to factor it. Obviously, there is more than one way to do it. Now, let's solve the equation. The first one is easy because it's quadratic. Let's go ahead and write the roots. By quadratic formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1 minus 4. That's going to be negative 3, but I can write it as square root of 3i. Remember complex numbers? We've done some complex number videos recently. Divide by 2. So those are the solutions to the quadratic. How about the cubic? 
Mm. We have a cubic formula, but let's go ahead and go through the process. Yes, you can memorize it, but I don't recommend. Uh, you definitely can, but if you ha can refer to your notes, let's say you, you're taking a test and you're allowed to use your notes, obviously, you can do that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set this equal to zero first, and then isolate the constant. And then now we're going to turn this into an identity that we can use. So here's here's our cubic. Let's, we're going to solve that equation now, but let me go ahead and rewrite that identity we just recently used, right? I think it was yesterday. Uh, we talked about this, right? So a plus b cubed minus 3ab times a plus b equals a cubed plus b cubed. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and uh, associate these two equations. How? We're going to call this x and x. So now 3ab becomes the coefficient of x, but the coefficient of x is negative 1. Here it's negative 3ab, so 3ab must equal 1, and the constant term a cubed plus b cubed must equal negative 1. Great. So we got a system. ab equals 1 third because 3ab is 1, positive 1, remember? And a cubed plus b cubed is negative 1. We can't find a and b by guessing because they are very, very irrational. But let's go ahead and find them because uh, easy. It's easy to find. So let's cube both sides here. Then we we're going to go ahead and isolate b cubed, write it as negative a cubed minus 1. And we're going to go ahead and substitute that here. That's how the cubic formula works. Let's do it. a cubed times b cubed, which is negative a cubed minus 1, equals 0. Not 0, 1 over 27. Uh, I think the problem that we did yesterday, I didn't complete the first solution because that was kind of painful, but this time we're going to do it completely. So now, uh, if you distribute and put everything on the right-hand side, you get a to the 6 plus a cubed plus 1 over 27 equals 0. And if you set a cubed equal to c, hopefully you see what I see, you get c squared plus c plus 1 over 27 equals 0. And guess what? This is a quadratic. So while solving the cubic after you do all these transformations, uh, you do get a quadratic. Same thing with the quartic. If you play around with the quartic, you get a cubic, and then you can solve that cubic. All right? So let's see what we can do. Easy, right? And I'm also going to show you what Wolfram Alpha gave us as solutions. But let me go ahead and work this out first. Negative 1 plus minus square root of b. Uh, squared minus 4ac, that's 4 over 27 over 2. And if you simplify this, you're going to get the following, 9, which is kind of surprising, right? Plus minus, square root of 69 divided by 8. Awesome. This, this is, uh, those are the c values, and c is equal to a cubed, remember? So keep that in mind, because we're going to uh, work it out. So let me go ahead and show you what Wolfram Alpha gave me for the real solutions. And I think we already talked about the complex solutions, right? So that's how it gave it to us. Um, a little bit of manipulation is required, but anyways, easy. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this up. So we got the a cubed. So if you take the positive value, uh, you can find the a from here, which is going to be cube root of 9 plus square root of 69 over 8. And B can be the other one. And they can switch around too, but that's not a ninth root, nope. Uh, because it doesn't matter. Remember, X is equal to A plus B. And I think it's not X, it's Y. Is it X? Okay, X. X is equal to A plus B. So X equals the sum of these two nice qu uh, quantities. It's this one plus this one. How nice, right? Okay, okay. So that's the solution that we get from here. And let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. And we'll finish up. So that's the real solution again, one more time. And here's the graph of x to the fifth plus x to the fourth plus one equals zero. Remember, we had a quadratic and a cubic. The quadratic didn't have any real solutions, and the cubic only has one real solution. If you want to find the other one, ah, that's very painful. You can do it. But this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then,
Be safe. Take care. And bye-bye.